In this video, we're going to build a Schmidt Trigger Logic Inverter using the 555 timer. And the uh, circuit's actually pretty simple. We have pin number 2 and pin number 6 tied together. You'll see that from time to time. That's when you want them both to monitor a voltage. So they're going to monitor the voltage of the trim pot. If we go all the way turn the dial all the way to the positive rail we'll have 5 volts I'm going to set the power supply to 5 volts I actually already do and then if we put the trim pot turn it down all the way to the negative rail we'll have 0 volts so the uh, inverter part of this the input that we give it if we give this 2 thirds of the power supply voltage or more pin number 6 will detect that then we'll have a low output. If we have one third or less of the power supply voltage, pin number two will detect that. It will set the output high. And so from one third to two thirds though, that middle range, it's gonna hold whatever state it was last put into. That's what makes it a Schmidt trigger. It doesn't have a specific point that it changes. You have to overcome a lot of distance in either direction for it to change. A lot of distance for this Schmidt trigger, other ones just have a little bit of voltage change where it's going to hold its state. So now the output, if we use LEDs, it makes it a lot easier to see what the output is doing, high or low. We can color code it however we want. And uh, so I'm going to use red at least at the beginning for it to light up when the output is high so the LED will lead to the negative rail a ground our zero volt reference point that will let us know the outputs high I'm gonna actually use a green LED but the green LED has uh, pretty close to the same electrical properties as the blue one they're naturally brighter than the red ones so instead of 220 ohms to protect it like I'm going to with the red one we're gonna use a 1 kilo ohm a higher value first off when the output at uh, pin number three here when it goes low when it connects to ground it literally connects to ground whereas when it goes high it does not quite get to five volts uh, probably a little less than four or something so we got a little less voltage the red LED gets a little less bright and uh, so we can adjust the uh, value of the resistors accordingly to even out their brightness so now we mostly just have the F555 there. We'll do a step by step build. The power supply, the output is off right now. The wires that come out of the power supply. So we have to power the 555 timer. And so pin number one goes to ground, goes to the uh, negative rail right there. And then pin number eight is the other power supply. And so I do have those two uh, jumpers right here. So pin one, that top pin, to the negative rail, and then pin eight to the positive rail. And that is every 555 timer circuit. You'll be doing that. Now, what we're gonna do is pin number four. That's another important one. That's the reset pin. We don't want to leave that floating. It really does nothing in this video it's waiting for a low signal. It's waiting for a uh, basically direct connection to the uh, negative rail. And so we're gonna tell it to do nothing by taking this jumper and putting it directly to the positive rail. So that will prevent it from resetting the 555 timer, which is the uh, dominant thing if you reset it it doesn't matter what else you're doing with the 555 timer it's going to reset so that's all that's doing now when it comes to the uh, trim pot we're going to use a trim pot for a signal right there so I got the uh, trim pot across here so that's pins uh, two and six that it's going to connect to so what we're actually going to do is take uh, this little jumper that I made and put that to the second pin there and then the pins work this way one two three four and then five six seven eight so we got the trigger there 
and the threshold. Trigger is 2, threshold is 6. So they'll both be monitoring the voltage and so straight across from there we have the uh, middle of the uh, trim pot right there. The way that I have this set up. So the uh, trim pot has three little wire pins down there. The two on the far sides they're the ends of a resistive element. So when you look at the uh, schematic here you see basically what it is right there. So there's a resistive element, two pins there, and then another one. That one's attached to a wiper that slides, depending on where I turn the uh, trim pot. So, we need to uh, get those power on the uh, two sides. Pretty straightforward. Clarity doesn't matter. It's just a resistor. So, we just got to remember that's more positive up there. And then, this one's more negative. So if I turn it uh, this way, we got zero volts once I turn the power supply on. And then about 2.5, about halfway, and then about uh, 5 volts when we go all the way up. Pretty simple. So now I left a couple other jumpers on the board to make it a little easier to place the LEDs. So let's uh, zoom back and take a look at that. So we got everything uh, wired up. And... So that is to the left. You notice here that the output of the schematic is on the right side. That's typically how you see schematics. Where, uh, when it comes to integrated circuits, they usually put the output to the right because you kind of work left to right in circuits when you draw them. But the output, pin 3, as we said, is the third pin down on the left. So 1, 2, 3. And so that's just where the output is on the integrated circuit. So, usually, uh, schematics won't line up, probably, with what exactly you see on, uh, on the board. And uh, you can't just uh, kind of lay it out the same way, that's what I'm trying to say. So, in case, we're going to take the red one. We're going to put it on the side that goes more negative. And so, here you see the LED before the resistor. But I'm going to put the resistor to the output in the LED down here. Order does not matter. Again, you lay it out how you like it. Long lead though, the anode is up one row. Short lead, the cathode going to the negative rail. On the schematic, the cathode is the uh, dash right there. So this is a diode with arrows coming out to indicate it's a light emitting dot. So we have to add the protective resistor on the... Uh, between the output and ground in series with the LED. And so, as I said before, we're going to use 220 ohm, a lower value resistor for a couple reasons. The red LED, I'll actually move that there, is just naturally not as bright as the green. And also, when the output is high, it doesn't go all the way to uh, 5 volts. And uh, I think it's about three and a half actually. But in any case, there you go. 220 ohms, it will work okay for this circuit. Now the green LED, pretty much the same thing, but we're wiring from the positive side of the uh, power supply. So I'm gonna grab the uh, green LED. So the long lead, the anode, goes to the uh, positive side. Short lead the cathode, down one spot. And we're gonna use the one kilo ohm resistor. And we could use 220, that's perfectly fine, but the green LED will be extremely bright, and then the LED, the red LED will look extremely dim. So I'm going to the uh, output right there. You can see both LEDs, or both our resistors, I mean, are to the output, and since we kind of got to work our way away from there, that's why I put the resistors to the output, they have more reach than the LEDs. And uh, I like to keep the LEDs where their leads are uh, one right next to the other. So that's it for wiring up. Let's uh, move the lamp so that we don't have glare. Push the uh, power button for my supply. It goes to these alligator clips. I clipped them to jumpers. And then I have other jumpers that connect the uh, two rails together. But in any case, there you can see we got the green LED. So we already determined green LED will mean the output is low because you can see it's more positive there so it's got to be more negative there so if we want to uh, set it high we go 
low for the input. That's what the inverter is. So low input, we got a high output. And then I'm going to raise the voltage of the trim pot till the green LED turns on. And so there you can see we're up to the left there. Now I have to go to the left and down before the red LED will let up. So I can keep going. It'll stay. But right now the output is high through all this range until it turns low. So it's not turning high and low at one point. We have this much range here which is called hysteresis. That's the area where the output stays in the same condition that it was before. So it prevents a uh, just a slight change in input resulting in a change of output. And there's a number of reasons that uh, you might use that. But in any case, that's really about it for this circuit. So I'm going to wrap it up there. And uh, make sure you check out one of the other videos that I post on the screen here. Subscribe, uh, click the bell so you get updates and uh, whatnot. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.